information and apply it, they will be able to not only improve their own lives, but the lives of others as well. Let's, let's do it from that perspective. Okay, and thanks again. And, and you're so right, just to recap, social structure influences human development, and I've laid out um, PIJ's four cognitive development stages. And now what I would like to try to do is to share some information as to prior to 1960, very little studies was done on the educational gap. Mm -hmm. As we may very well know, there are a lot of thinking about social structure, how it was formulated here in America with 244 years of enslavement, 81 years of Jim Crow laws that led into 1896 with Plessy versus Ferguson that brought about things that were totally segregated. And that was the law of the land. And if you think about millions of people born into that social structure, torn up families, torn up economics, things totally inequitable and unfair, leading into the 1954 Brown versus Board of Education, how would you then make a comparison between the educational gap of those that the social structure was not that way and inequitable throughout their entire lives, generation from generation, in comparison to other ethnic groups, and African Americans in particular, that had to experience it. So prior to 1960, there was very little research, but Dr. James S. Coleman in 1966 did a classic study on looking at the educational gap between African Americans and European Americans. And now what I'm suggesting here today, looking at social structure, it was set up in America where there was a lot of inequalities that existed. Um, poverty, having laws that, are not, that did not allow a particular ethnic group to have equal access to education. So what he found in the study was simply this, that one, that there was a big educational gap between African Americans and European Americans. Two, he found that the resources that were involved in school systems because things were segregated certainly made a difference. He also found that socioeconomic status, if there were African Americans and other ethnic groups that had financial and educational, social structural types of influences early in their life, regardless of the situations of, of segregation, their children paired and, and did fairly well. So um, socioeconomic status made a, a difference. And then the last was indeed the notion that if families were successful and were present, their children had an opportunity to be successful as well. However, when you look at that study or that gap, and you fast forward to today, the gap is still there. Educationally and looking at standardized tests, high dropout rates for African American males and not finishing high school, success in college. So we still have the social structural type of a problem that is so systemic. It's ingrained in the very social structure of society or the institutions of our society. So what I'm trying to suggest in laying out social structures, understanding that for generations, if culture is something that is passed down from one generation to the next generation to the next generation, well, what has happened to the family when it was destroyed within one ethnic group, African Americans? What would happen when laws were put out for education was not equitable? What happens when you had to work for hundreds of years for nothing so you didn't have an economic stability in comparison to others? So now when you fast forward to the present, some of those same circumstances still are present within our society or social system today that still bring about that gap. So while many might feel that if we, as President Obama has done, he saw this as a problem, I'm sure, when he tried to make it a, a, a national issue of letting everybody have an equal access to kindergarten through the first grade, look at that first, third grade test. But what I'm proposing today is to suggest that, according to PIJ, we have to inform the institution of families. That they must be very aware that in that first developmental, cognitive developmental stage of the sensory motor stage, from birth to age two, emphasis must be placed on the senses, reading to them, uh, making sure they live in a secure environment that you're engaging them in a very positive way with positive reinforcement and not spankings. As they develop through that from then two to seven and then enter the first grade with, with this type of access, um, programs that are out there during the summer that you're engaging with them over that little short period of time in educational opportunities. There are programs that families can get them involved in from Head Start, if you can afford it, to get them into camps or church, the institution of religion churches involved in this issue of that gap. 
uh, families are uh, making sure that their children are getting involved into educational or camps during the summer. Not sports camps, nothing wrong with that, but educational camps. We're trying to close this gap on that third grade test. How can you do that? We have to understand that we need to do something early and prepare for kindergarten as we get into first, second, and third grade and the next time they take the test to take an SAT or ACT to then go on to college. Because that gap, as it was in the 60s, is still very present if not the same, probably worse today than then. So well, we have to deal with that. Dr. Severn, uh, and <clears throat> traveling around as you do among sociologists yes. and people who do wish to reconstruct your American yes. society, what would be your suggestions in terms of how we might be able to uh, greater reinforce some of the ideas you're talking about yes. today? Well, it's interesting you brought that up because a colleague, another sociologist, and myself and others are working on a very interesting um, um, project that we're hoping that will try to help this problem, at least be an intervention in this issue. Dr. Levi Jones, a noted sociologist, a, a former colleague of yours, still is, and, and good friend. Thinking in terms of a, a research school that goes into all of the 50 urban areas throughout the United States, and we study the internal operations of the schools and what is a best fit for those schools and how out of that you can have an experimental group and control group where you can see what are the best practices, the lessons learned, and then go forth with having all of the schools throughout urban areas in the United States to be able to have better models for then educating the children. You know, there's a strong sense that we have to do something because disproportionately mm -hmm. African-American males are dropping out of school, not graduating with a high school degree. And as you and I very well know, high school uh, undergraduate degree is very much needed in this telecommunication, that's the 10th institution, mm -hmm. society in which we live in. Mm -hmm. So we have to kind of solve that problem. But I propose in this whole issue of mm -hmm. trying to get at it, the families, the institution of the family needs to know that at birth, whether you're grandparent, mm -hmm. great grandparent, uncle, aunt, niece, cousin, you got to do some development from birth to age two in, in thinking about entering into kindergarten. Mm -hmm. That is very important, it's fundamental. And I think that's where a large gap um, actually is implemented. Mm -hmm. When you see those in social classes across all ethnic groups that have successful children, they have done just that. Mm -hmm. From birth to two, mm -hmm. from two to seven, they've been very involved in their educational life, getting them exposed. Mm -hmm. if, they, if you don't come from a family member that plays a piano or a violin or a cello, if you expose them early, mm -hmm. they can do it. Mm -hmm. Just like they don't know how to play basketball or football, but you expose them to it, mm -hmm. and we, we excel at it. Mm -hmm. So if you do any of the educational opportunities, that's when we've talked on the break about having 